Good morning and good afternoon to all. So during this uh, webinar, you will learn more about uh, quantitative targeted absolute uh, proteomics called uh, QTAP and its um, application in the MPK. <coughs> during this presentation, I will introduce uh, Encore Design and especially the different biological and the MPK services that we can provide as fee for service or in an integrated way. You will move to QTAP in more details, then you will explore a typical case study with quantification of transporter for the validation of an in vitro human blood brain barrier model. After conclusion, I will tell you about the upcoming event uh, to know more about QTAP assets. On Condesign, first of all, Condesign is a biopharma company dedicated to precision medicine. The main goal is to discover new therapies effective against cancer. That's why we have the first company in the clinic, an activated EGF PET tracer. Our internal and partner program are based on nanocyclic as next generation of macrocyclic kinase inhibitor. Our specialization is quite broad from oncology, immunology, inflammation, metabolic disorder, on infectious diseases. The founder of Hong Kong Design, Dr. Philip Jean, built his, his company 25 years ago on various innovative technology platforms integrated as a translational drug discovery engine. Hong Kong Design provides in a fee-for-service clinical assessment of anti-cancer and other therapies. The headquarters are based in Dijon, France, and we have uh, two other sites in Montreal and in south of Paris. As you can see, the DMPK and biological services of Hong Kong Design covers the full drug discovery and development process. And our skilled experts can assist you from early drug discovery to preclinical study until clinical trials. Through this uh, non-exhaustive list of in-house essay in drug discovery DMPK, our scientists can provide you the right tool at the right moment to move your compound forward until reaching the clinical candidate. For information, we are not restricted to any therapeutic area. In preclinical development, our main strength is our huge experience in handling radio label studies. Uh, label with carbon-14 or tritium. In rodent, to explore the biodistribution of your compound, QWABA on mass balance studies. In metabolism studies, QTRP technique play a major role in SIP on UGT enzyme quantitation in cell line and tissue. Our DMPK and biotechnical scientists can move your compound forward from END to NDA through all the different uh, phases of clinical studies up to the post-marketing studies by providing services in regulatory biologies, PK, biomarkers, metabolite in safety testing, immunogenicity, drug-drug interaction, and pharmacoimaging. Since now we have uh, the big picture of the service portfolio in DMPK biologies that Okanadana can offer, Let's move to quantitative targeted absolute proteomic or QTAP. Start with the origin of this technology. It was uh, developed and validated by Professor Tetsuya Terazaki through his spin off of the Tohoku University in Sendai, Japan, called Proteodomics Frontiers. The exclusivity of this license was acquired by Bertha Pharma a couple of years ago, and after the acquisition of Berta Pharma by Hong Kong Design in 2017, this exclusive license is exploited by Hong Kong Design now. As you can see here, through these gearing elements, quantitative targeted absolute proteomic is located between global proteomics and cell and organ phenotype. As you already know, transporter, enzyme, receptor, uh, uh, channels are well known to play key role in drug admit. So understanding their role is crucial. How does this protein influence drug admit efficacy? 
how these proteins are affected by drugs. Gene expression level do not always correlate to protein expression level, and quantitative analysis of protein expression using antibody-based assay was used, but with some issue. The first one is the long and difficult preparation of suitable antibodies. The second one is the cross-reactivity. And the last one is the lack of multiplex analysis. That's why a new methodology of a protein quantification was developed and is called QTRP because the protein to be quantified are first selected as target peptide and only these peptides are quantified to evaluate their absolute expression level. In this comparison between antibody-based quantitative analysis and LCMS-based analysis, QTRP approach overcome many of the difficulties with protein, protein quantitation using antibody, such as faster method development, higher specificity, and accessible multiplex analysis. For the, for, for the workflow, first of all, for the protein, from the protein you select a target peptide or signature peptide of this protein. I will explain on the next slide how do you select this peptide among the target protein. The, this peptide will be synthesized and labeled and isotopically labeled and used as internal standard to obtain a standard curve by LCMSMS. <coughs> From the tissue or cells, you purify a protein on several steps of denaturation, reduction, alkylation, and trypsin digestion are applied to the protein. For quantitation, you spike the internal standard peptide, label 1, and record all MRM of both peptide from the peak area ratio. Uh, it means the in label 1 divided by the label 1, you are able to calculate the absolute amount in femtomol of the signature peptide from the targeted protein. So Professor uh, Terazaki developed an in silico uh, selection criteria for the determination of the appropriate uh, peptide fragment. And this method is based on the amino sequences. Peptide selection is the most critical issue in this method. You can see how we select the peptide. The one with high sensitivity here and low variability. This peptide should be from 6 to 16 amino acid long, no, mit no myternin and cysteine residue for better stability, the presence of aliphatics, aliphatic amino acids for stable isotope labeling with C13 or nitrogen 15, and no amino acid involved in post-translational modification. After trypsin digestion, the selected peptide is quantified by multiple reaction monitoring, MRM, using triple quadruple mass spectrometer. In the first quadruple Q1, the target mass of the peptide is selected. Then in the collision cell, Q2, the selected parent peptide ion is fragmented by both collision energy and gas. And finally, the four intense data peptide ions are selected in the second quadruple called Q3. The combination of Q1 and Q3 mass filter is called MRM transition, and this can be changed every 10 milliseconds. It depends really on the instrument. So up to 300 MRM transition in total can be quanti quantified simultaneously in a single analysis. That means 150 MRM transition for the targeted peptide, the one you want to quantify, and 150 MRM transition for the corresponding internal standard peptide, the one with labeled. Since you follow four MRM transition pe peptides, that means we can quantify up to 37 different proteins in a single analysis. 
the potential of QTLP based approach is quite broad, as you can see from this slide, in preclinical and in clinical research. By focusing on critical issues in drug discovery and development, such lack of efficacy in human, toxicity in human, and poor clinical safety. QTLP based studies will provide us, in fine, a quantitative atlas of functional protein in animal model on human in both normal and disease states. Let me introduce you the pharmacoproteomic field as the use of proteomic analysis in drug discovery and development research. It is known that expression level of genes and their transcripts do not necessarily correlate with corresponding protein abundance. And it is at the protein level that cellular processes are functionally regulated. In pharmacoproteomics, there are two approaches, the global one and the targeted one. And QTAP belongs to the second approach. QTAP of functional protein is a rational way to overcome remaining mechanistic gap when the genome of the proteome are investigated independently in response to drug threatening. <laughs> Up to now, we can quantify this list of SIP on UGT enzyme on the following list of main uh, uh, membrane transporter. You propose several species assessment, human, uh, mouse, rat, or monkey. And after six years of operation in the company, you already assess some tissue, like such as human skin, mouse liver, human intestinal biopsy, and several cell lines were assessed also, such as the D3 cell line here, and on the HBMEC cell line used as human blood brain barrier models. I'm going to present you a case study where QTAP was able to solve a wrong BBB permeability prediction during the validation of a cell line called HBMEC as an in vitro human blood brain barrier model. First of all, let me define the blood brain barrier. It's formed by endothelial cells in, in, in cerebral microvessels tightly connected to each other, and it separates the CNS from the bloodstream. It protects the brain from, uh, it protects the brain, sorry, of the nerve tissue. It regulates the homeostasis for optimal neuronal signaling and supply the brain with nutrient and eliminates waste product back into the bloodstream. As you can see, here is a cell line it's coming from Jump Inkins Institute in Baltimore in US. The one was studied here, yeah, and if you are interested, you can ask them directly. So, in order to validate this human BBB model as early drug discovery for screening of CNS active compound, the client, by the way, who was me, I was already a customer of this approach a couple of years ago. So, the client select eight compounds, four which cross the BBB here, and four which do not cross the BBB. For the BBB permeability assay, you decide to validate the quantitative method following the current international guideline for industry from FDA and EMA. Here are the results of this BBB model validation. First of all, uh, the endothelial permeability PE here of sodium fluorescein. Sodium fluorescein is known as a fluorescent barrier integrity marker, which do not cross the BBB. So as you can see, the value are very low here, that showing that the model is tight. So this P of sodium fluorescein was close to 5 to 10 to the power of minus 6 centimeters per second. And the T value, uh, trans endothelial electrical resistance, were similar before and after the essay, demonstrating that these eight compounds do not impact the integrity of the barrier. For, for the four positives here, uh, control in green, their p-value were higher to the p-value of sodium fluorescein. So here in blue, much more higher than the yellow part. 
showing that this compound crosses the BBB. For the four negative control here, except uh, quinidine, their p-value was similar than fluorescein, sodium fluorescein, demonstrating that this compound do not cross the BBB. Since quinidine is an inhibitor on substrate of PGP, or called MDR1 also, this high BBB permeability might be due to low expression of PGP in the cell line, or saturation of PGP, it enabling the compound to easily permeate the monolayer. This warning initiates the QTRP approach. As a reminder, here are the main key drug transporters in the brain capillary endothelial cells. As you can see, PGP or MDR1 and PCRP are highly recommended for investigation in the regulatory uh, DDI guidance, drug drug interaction. In the endothelial cell of the blood brain barrier, there are other important transporters. And finally, for this project, since multiplexing is allowed, you select 11 uh, membrane transporter and one ubiquitous protein, uh, sodium potassium ATPase, used for normalization of the data. Here are the main results. You can see four MRM profile for MDR1, PCRP, MCT1, and MRP1. You have four color corresponding to four different MRM transition here. For MDR1 and PCRP, we have only two MRM transition in, in blue and red. So we are not able to quantify these two proteins in HBMHC cell line. But for MCT1, three MRM transition are present. And for MRP1, four transitions are present. To be able to quantify a protein, you need to have at least three out of the four transitions. So you can conclude that these two key transporters, very important in the DDI guidance, PGP and PCRP, are not quantifiable because they are below the limit of quantification, but only detectable. This result clarifies the wrong BBB permeability prediction of quinidine in this BBB model, showing that the, the two criteria recommended in the guidance are not controlled but only detectable. For conclusion, you have a similar work that was done in the past with the well-established cell line uh, uh, HCMECD3 from the Professor Kuro in the Institut Kosha in Paris. And despite a correct BBB permeability prediction with uh, uh, HBMEC, you found low expression of these two transporters using various methods like QTAP, RT-PCR, and red cell blood. At the end, the low expression of PGP and PCP, BCRP reveal a major limitation for the use of HBMEC as an in vitro human BBB model. As a take-home message, you can say that Oncodesign provides a broad range of DMPK bandage services, which covers the totality of the drug discovery and development research. QTAP-based approach is an alternative with several assets, faster method development, high sensitivity, high sensitivity and accessible multiplex analysis to classic approaches such as RT-PCR and Western blood. QTAP-based approach has the potential to underpin rational strategy for pharmacoproteomics-based stratification of both preclinical and clinical research. And key in this case study, QTAP-based approach was able to detect a low expression of PGP and based therapy in HBHC cell line, whereas the classic approach did not. With this high sensitivity, QTAP is also able to quantify all CIP enzyme and UGT enzyme of interest. Hong Kong Design holds the exclusive license for this powerful technology. It's time to thank all the people who contribute to this work.
Thanks for Jordan and Grégoire from my team in charge of QTAP analysis and Isabel in charge of RTPCA and Western blot. At last, if you are planning to attend these two events in Liverpool and Barcelona, Encore Design will display a poster regarding QTAP. And you are all welcome to meet us for further discussion, comment or question. Thanks for attending this webinar and it's time for question, I guess.